you do that. If we have charges like electrons, 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 with a force which is enormous. Hey, hey, welcome. This is the Electronics Lab. And in this video, we're going to look at the calculations for figuring out the equivalent capacitance when you have a number of capacitors in series like we do here. And then we'll do the same thing with capacitors in parallel. So what we have, we have some number of capacitors in series, C1, C2, some number here, and then up to Cn. And we want to know what is the total capacitance between those two points. Well, to figure out what that total capacitance is, we can look at a few things that we know. We know, or we can designate the voltage across each one of these as V1, V2, all the way up to Vn. We also know that the total voltage across all of these, the total V, Vt, will be equal to the sum of those voltages. That's just the application of Kirchhoff's voltage law. So V total will be V1 plus V2 plus all those other capacitor voltages plus Vn. Something else that we know. Capacitance is equal to the charge stored on a capacitor per unit, uh, per volt. Well, we've got an equation in terms of volts here. And if we rearrange the capacitance equation in terms of volts, we get V is equal to charge divided by capacitance. So now if we take this equation and plug it in for each one of these individual voltages, we get the total charge divided by the total capacitance is equal to the charge on capacitor 1 divided by its capacitance plus the charge on capacitor 2 divided by its capacitance plus same thing for all those other capacitors plus finally the charge on capacitor n divided by its capacitance. Okay, so what we need to do is figure out what's going on with the charges on these capacitors. Well, let's take a look at just the instance where we have two capacitors in parallel. And these capacitors are connected over to a battery there. Some kind of voltage source anyway. And what's going to happen when that's connected? We'll have the electrons are going to travel and they're going to build up on this plate here. And when, as they build up on that plate there, they're going to push electrons away, causing a positive on the other side of the plate. But the number of, the number of electrons that get pushed onto this bottom plate will equal the number of electrons that get pushed away from the top plate and then build up on the second plate. And then those electrons are going to push away electrons from the second plate and allow a build up a positive charge on the top plate of the, second, of the second capacitor. So electrons come into the bottom plate, the same number of electrons get pushed away to the second plate. So that's telling us that the amount of charge on the second capacitor has to be equal to the amount of charge on the first capacitor. So we call this Q1 and this Q2. Those two values have to be equal. So you can expand this idea if you have multiple capacitors in, in series. And no matter how many capacitors you do have in series, the charges on each one of those capacitors is going to be equal. So that means QT is equal to Q1, is equal to Q2, is equal to all the charges, all the way up to QN. So if we divide by that Q, what we end up doing is just canceling out all of those Qs. And we end up with this series equation that says the inverse of the total capacitance is equal to the sum of the inverses of all of the individual capacitors. And this is really similar to the, the parallel resistor equation. And the, the calculations are all are done the exact same, except this time it's with series capacitances. OK, now let's move on to parallel capacitances. So here we are with a number of parallel capacitors. We have C1, C2, some number in between all the way up to Cn. And we want to know what is the total equivalent capacitance of this set of parallel capacitors. Well, let's, let's see some things that we know about this circuit. Well, we'll have a voltage across C1, we'll have a voltage across C2, and we'll have a voltage across Cn. They're all in parallel, so they'll all have the same voltage. 
and they'll have the same voltage as the total voltage. So because they're all in parallel, we know that VT is equal to V1, is equal to V2, is equal to Vn, and all of the voltages of the capacitors in between. Again, we also know that capacitance is equal to the amount of charge you can push onto the capacitor per volt. What else do we know about this? Well, what about the total charge? The total charge is built up, built up on all those capacitors. Well, each one of those capacitors is going to have its own charge buildup. So capacitor 1 will have charge Q1, capacitor 2 will have charge Q2, capacitor N will have charge QN. The total charge that builds up on all these capacitors will be the sum of those charges. So the total charge will be Q1 plus Q2 plus all the other capacitors that, that may be living there plus QN. Total charge is equal to the sum of the charges across those capacitors. Well, again, going to back to this equation, C equals Q over V, rearranging that for Q, we get Q is equal to C times V. So plugging this equation in for each one of those individual charges, we get the total charge is CT times VT, and that's equal to C1 times V1 plus C2 times V2 plus, well, plus all the charges in between, plus Cn times Vn. Well, remember, Vt equals V1 equals V2 equals Vn. So all of these voltages, we can divide both sides of the equation by that voltage, and all those are going to cancel out, and we end up with the total capacitance is equal to C1 plus C2 plus all those capacitors in between plus Cn. So basically what it's saying is the total capacitance is simply equal to the sum of the capacitors when you have capacitors in parallel like I do here. So after this video, what do you know? Well, you know how to calculate the total capacitance when you have a set of capacitors that are in series. And the total capacitance will be, well, the inverse of the total capacitance will be the sum of the inverses of the individual capacitors. And here I've shown you how to figure out the total capacitance when you have capacitors in parallel. That total capacitance will simply be the sum of the individual capacitors. And that's it for this video. You are awesome. Keep on learning, keep on having fun, and I'll see you next time.